This video is about a simple thing we can all do after every drawing, which in my experience will rapidly improve our drawing. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. Being helpfully self-critical after we finish a drawing is I think a very positive thing. There is nothing negative about self-criticism because we're not trying to tear anyone down, certainly not ourselves. What we're trying to do is focus on things that, that we need to improve on. We can focus on things where we made wrong choices so that we can work better with our drawing choices or see where we need to develop our skills for the future. Although we're looking for things that we've done wrong perhaps, we're focused on getting them right the next time. So I want to show you some of my self-critical thinking when I finish a drawing, when I look at it, some of the questions I ask myself. And at the end, I'm going to show you a really useful tip that I use at least once, if not twice, every drawing that helps me get them looking right. So stay tuned for that or zip forward to that if you just want to get that. When I self-critique this drawing of a street scene in Montmartre, I had to be honest with myself and say compositionally it just didn't work. There was this large dead space in the centre which really just takes all the attention and, and tells us nothing. And it looked great in the photo, but the strengths of this area in the photo weren't ones I was able to capture in my drawing. And, and this figure here who was meant to be part of the story of the, the walking along this winding street, he was too far to the left and he was too dark in the shadows that were too dark and it just didn't work. In comparison, later though, I did another drawing where I was able to co correct all those things I'd learned and I was able to highlight the figures, keep them a little more central and use the lighting to be part of showing who they were and where they were going and, and much more successful choices, but partly because I was able, able to be realistically critical of this earlier attempt. But as well as looking at the overall composition of a drawing we've done, there are lots of different elements in a drawing and we can, we can focus on those as well when we self-critique the drawing that we've just done. This is a, a lovely scene inside the Palais Garnier in Paris. I was very happy with the composition and the line work, but if I was honest with myself afterwards, I had to admit that I'd gone too dark in these tones on the far wall of the grand staircase area. And by going too dark, I pulled them closer to us because dark tones tend to come forward. And I'd created this lovely shaded framework of this arch and these columns and this lovely silhouette of the woman. And it would have been better if I would let all these tones be relatively lighter than in fact they were in the, the reference photo I used. And then that, that would have created a stronger contrast. And this woman would have stood out if you like, as, as more of a character in this scene. So it was helpful to see that and to be determined not to make that mistake it with another drawing. So I'm learning to start with a lighter touch with my tones. But sometimes it's not just the choice of tones we make, it's how well we handle those tones once we've chosen what they'll be, as I found out in this drawing. When I looked at this drawing of the main staircase in the Hermitage in St. Petersburg, many elements I was really happy with, but I had to be honest in the end, and I spoiled it by rushing the tonal work up in this top corner of the ceiling and this cornice area. I, I was just clumsy with it because I was going too fast. I was trying to finish quickly. I went out too dark, and then I just threw more tone on it, trying to make it better. And I learned a very valuable lesson and having, <laughs> having I think, spoiled what was a drawing I was really happy with. So it's important to just spend, take a moment at the end to recognize that so that I don't do it again. As well as composition and tone, there are other issues with a drawing, particularly architectural drawings such as perspective, which I'm normally pretty good at. But you know, we can take our strengths for granted as well. And it's by looking critically at our work that we can perhaps discover that uh, we need to pay more attention as I discovered the hard way. Now, when I looked at this drawing of an entranceway into the Metro on the Place de la Concorde, uh, this was really hard medicine for me to take, to be honest. But when I looked at the perspective of these buildings, which is always something that, that you need to have a good look at, I think, in self-critiquing, when I looked at the perspective, I found 
a really significant error that I could do nothing about. Why don't you put uh, this video on pause and see if you can find my perspective error. I'll just give you a sec. Did you find it? It's this line here. It's a pretty big mistake, I think. Uh, our, our eye level is here, and then all the lines above it should increase in angle, which they all do, except for this one, which actually slopes the wrong way. Oh, I just exaggerated it there. But, but can you see now what I've done wrong? And I think I could have made better tonal choices as well. A bit darker down here, a bit darker down here. But, but this was the clangor that I couldn't fix. And again, it was a lesson learned. And from this lesson, I have learned to pay a lot more attention to my perspective. Remember, this is not about me giving myself a hard time or telling myself I'm no good. This is about me telling myself I can improve with practice. And if I'm re realistic about the things that I'm drawing, I can make that process as fast and as effective as I possibly can. And that's a real positive. And now for my great tip. And this tip is really important to me personally in my drawing practice. But hey, if you've lasted till this long, please hit like, subscribe, please leave a comment, let me know how you're finding it. This tip is at some point in the process, and certainly at the end, I take a photo and I give a really careful examination of my drawing, looking at the photo on my phone, really small. And somehow the size being reduced makes it easier to see things. Now I, I do this at the end of the pencil stage if I'm doing a pencil underdrawing because I want to see mistakes before I commit to ink. But I also do this at the end of the ink stage so that I can have a good look and, and you know, see if there are things I need to just work a little harder at in my next drawing. Let's have a look. So why does looking at a photo work so well? I think it's partly because on our phone, we have a photo that's greatly reduced in size and it just condenses everything and lets us see the whole thing more easily. And as, as a whole thing, we can see where the different um, proportions don't, don't connect or where the perspective doesn't line up. You see, when I've been drawing something, as in say this drawing for three or four hours, I've been focusing on small elements as I draw this window, this window, this flying buttress, this flying buttress, this flying buttress, these decorative shapes down here, this little bit up here, there's another window here. And I've really been doing them all as individual units. But it's when I see them together in a small photo at the end, I can take it on board in my head. Have I got the proportions correctly? And have I connected these parts together? And in this drawing of one of the roof decorations of the Chateau de Chambord, in France, I realized that I hadn't got the parts. I'd got the perspective very wrong here. I hadn't spread the angles well uh, from here to here. These vertical elements that should have lined up didn't. These window panes took a turn to the, the left on the window above and the architectural elements higher up also turned off to the left. They didn't line up. And so that gave me a chance having, having critiqued my phone photograph to actually redraw these perspective lines straighter, get the perspective correct. It let me align these the panes on these two windows and it also let me tighten up and straighten the architectural elements further up so that this is a nice straight line. And then when I actually completed the drawing, as you can see, that critiquing bore a lot of fruit in getting the perspective right here and getting wonderful alignment going right the way up to the top created a wonderful effect and, and, I, and I really like the drawing as opposed to looking at it and being unhappy because I'd asked some hard questions earlier. So self-critiquing can really bear fruit, particularly if we have a pencil stage. But if there's no pencil stage, we do it at the end of the ink stage and ask ourselves, if I were doing it again, what would I consciously be changing to improve my drawing? It's a very positive question to ask. So there it is. When we finish a drawing, let's not rush on to the next one, but just let's take a moment to sit with the one we've just finished and say to ourselves, is this everything I hoped it would be? Is there anything I can learn from this so that I can take this attention into my next drawing and improve? All the best. See you next time.